On November 16th, Chapter 1 of the Pixels game will finally launch. I tried to dig up all the old and new information, so you will be up to date before next Wednesday. Let's dive into everything we know so far. One thing is certain, the game will look and feel very different with the launch of Chapter 1. We will get pets and flowers for example, but also competitions, mini games and an actual story you can follow along while playing Quest. When you start the game in Chapter 1, it's mostly about resource gathering. We all know we can farm pallberries and carrots for example, but there will be more. You can gather wood, but also water, stone, power and metal. If you did the wild goose chase quest during the play to airdrop period, you already are familiar with the axe. This item will be reset before the game starts and will be available for all players early in the game. In this screenshot I took from the teaser trailer on the Pixels Twitter last week, you can see how the axe is being used to chop trees. There will also be a lot more industries. An interesting one is apiary, which is a difficult word for beekeeping. Again, if you did the wild goose chase quest, you had a jar of honey for a brief moment. Here you can see a jar of honey is worth only 2 berry coins, which isn't much. But then again, I don't think the honey is the end product. Let me show you why. In the white paper, there is an example of how apiary can be leveled up while you progress in the game. For example, the apiary base provides honey and benefits nearby flowers and fruit trees. Progressing with the apiary development results in wax related industries like candle making and provides benefits for machinery lubrication, waterproofing watercraft and weatherproofing apparel. So now we suddenly have more resources like candles and lubricant for machinery. Also we might get boats and it looks like there will be actual weather changes in the game. I mean, why else do we need to weatherproof our clothes? Talking about clothes, a few months ago this picture was posted on the Pixels Twitter. At first I had no idea what this is, but this comment got the team's attention. Maybe we can grow silkworms and use the silk to make clothes. A big thing in the game is cooking and crafting. For cooking you need to obtain different recipes before you can cook something. In the early game we could cook some loaves and pies, but now it looks like we can also make drinks. For example this pulberry wine, which you also had for a short time during the wild goose chase quest. It's obvious there will be a lot more options to choose from in chapter 1. Before we go any further with some awesome information and leaks, I want to address this next question, which is asked a lot. Where can we buy and sell the pixel token? There hasn't been an official answer yet, but the founder Luke once mentioned that we would be able to find out if we dug a little deeper in their current investors. So I did and I found this picture. And when I went to the website of Leonis Capital I found this. If you need any bullish news, Coinbase is the second largest crypto exchange in the world. So if this information is true, then the Pixel token will get a lot of exposure. On September 7th, this behind the scenes picture was tweeted. You can see a Nepricot, which is based on the apricot fruit. You can eat one to get more energy. And the funny thing is, this fruit was in the game all along. Here you can see them in the general store. Other interesting things from this tweet are these cucumbers and sloth tomatoes. You can also see that these vegetables have seeds, which means you should be able to plant and grow them yourself. And also these two crops were shown in the general store. It looks like shop owner Hazel is the one to go to if you want leaks. In this tweet you can also see a well. You have to use it to fill up your watering can. And it looks like they are planning to add a bathtub. Maybe you can put this one in the leaked bathhouse. There is one other item I would like to talk about and that is this outhouse. An outhouse is a small hut on your land, usually with a toilet. It is part of this small spec. And here is the inside of the outhouse. It is very small and it isn't very clean either. Every player starts with their own very small land, or like Luke would call it, lovably small land. This spec is so small that you definitely want to upgrade to a bigger land. Upgrading your land is one of the utilities of the new berry token for example. So if you made it into the top 20,000 during the play to airdrop phase, you have already earned some berry tokens. It might be enough to instantly upgrade your small spec. The next level of land is this rented piece of land. It's a little bit bigger and you are able to customize it using your berry tokens. As you can see in this image, the NFT land is a lot bigger and it also reflects the traits the NFT has. For example, you can see this land has a windmill, a coop, a silo and a small house. 
And here you can see how a large house will look like. Inside these houses, you can customize your living space with a king size bed for example, or a fridge. If you own a large house, you have more space to build. Here you can see you are able to build a coupe. If this is only exclusive to NFT lands with a coupe trade, or if you can actually upgrade your land with a coupe, is unknown at this time. Just like recipes and cooking, you need to find blueprints before you can buy and build these types of buildings. And remember, we are only at the start of the actual game. The team is taking a lot of inspiration from games like Stardew Valley, Hubble Hotel and RuneScape. So how will the game look like when chapter 10 is released for example? There are some other details you can find in the white paper, but I think I got the most interesting ones. I put a link in the white paper in the description just below the subscribe button. And here is another video where I will show you how I spent over 24 million coins on fertilizer to improve my rank during the double XP weekend.